School of Management Studies IGNU presents an audio book on the course MMPC 002 Human Resource Management for MBA program. Presenting Block 1 Introduction to Human Resource Management Unit 1 Concept and Evolution of HRM Part 1 Learners, in Part 1, we will discuss Introduction, What is HRM, Evolution of HRM, and Objectives of HRM. Unit 1 Concept and Evolution of Human Resource Management In this unit, we will read and understand first the meaning and concept of human resource management. Second, trace the evolution of HRM, that is human resource management. Third, understand the scope and objectives of HRM. And fourth, explain various components of HRM. Introduction Quoting Mr. N. R. Narayanan Murthy, founder, Enforces Limited, he said, You must treat your employees with respect and dignity because in the most automated factory in the world, you need the power of human mind. That is what brings innovation. If you want high-quality minds to work for you, then you must protect the respect and dignity. Among the five MS of management, namely men, money, machines, materials and methods, HRM deals with the first M, men. Men are what we refer to as human resources. Human resources are an organization's most valuable and unique asset. Human resource management is a dynamic and challenging task for any organization, especially in the age of globalization and rapid technological change. As a result, all managers must be aware of the concept of HRM and its significance in the workplace. This brings the first unit of the course on HRM we shall cover the evolution and concept of HRM along with its objectives and scope. As a field of management functions, HRM has undergone many changes over the years, giving it a strategic role in an organization. What is HRM? HRM is the process of acquiring, developing, maintaining and retaining human resources in an organization with this strategic objective of achieving organizational goals. So, what is the significance of the term human resource management? Human. This term refers to an organization's required workforce. The term resource refers to an organization's workforce supply. Management refers to the most efficient use of resources in order to achieve organizational goals. Many eminent management scientists have defined HRM in different ways. Let us study that. First, Edwin B. Filippo. He said, Human resource management is planning, organizing, directing and controlling of the procurement, development, resources to the end that individual and societal objectives are accomplished. Second, DeCenzo and Robbins. They said, HRM is a managerial process of acquiring and engaging the required workforce appropriate for the job and concerned with developing maintenance and utilization of workforce. Third, 
de Sella. He said the policies and practices involved in carrying out the people or human resource aspects of management position including recruiting, screening, training, rewarding and appraising comprises of HRM. Fourth, French Wendell. He said, Human resource management is the recruitment, selection, development, utilization, compensation and motivation of human resources by the organization. Fifth, Storey. He said, a distinctive approach to employment management which seeks to achieve competitive advantage through the strategic deployment of a highly committed and capable workforce using an integrated array of cultural, structural and personal techniques. In a sense, HRM is a strategic approach to acquire, motivate, develop and manage human resources of an organization. For each of these functions, there are policies which the HR managers follow keeping in view the organizational culture. Evolution of HRM HRM has evolved from the personal management. Going back to the roots of evolution of personal management, the contributions of psychologists and management experts such as Elton Mayo, F. W. Taylor and Robert Owen play a significant role. Elton Mayo was the founder of the Human Relations Movement in the 1920s. In the famous Hawthorne study, he measured the relationship between productivity and the work environment. He emphasized the influence of human relations on worker productivity. Similarly, Robert Owen is considered to be the creator and initiator of reforms introduced for workers. He introduced the principle of eight hours work per day. Owen recognized the importance of improving working conditions in the workplace and its impact on worker productivity and efficiency. Also, worth mentioning is the contribution of Frederick W. Taylor. Taylor has developed a differentiated compensation system that rewards employees with higher performance levels that are still used in the company. He promoted scientific management through four principles. First, evaluate a task by dissecting its components. Second, select employees that had appropriate skills for a task. Third, provide workers with inventives and training to do a task. Fourth, use science to plan how workers perform their jobs. Human Resources Approach However, at some stage in early 60s, the pet milk principle advocating that happy workers are productive workers or happy cows provide extra milk of human relationists have been largely rejected. Recognizing the truth that workers are unique in their personal way, having individual needs, every employee is a unique and surprisingly individual wishes. It was considered that each worker is a completely unique and highly complex character with exceptional desires and values. What motivates one worker won't encourage any other and being satisfied or feeling appropriate may additionally have very little effect on the productiveness of positive personnel. Slowly, however, steadily, the trend closer to treating employees as resources or assets emerged. The contribution of behavioral science to management practice consists primarily of producing new insights in place of new strategies. It has advanced and extended right into a useful way of thinking about the position of the supervisor, the nature of businesses and the behavior of an individual inside and business enterprise. Let us look into these trends more closely by examining the transformation of personal management to HRM from one stage to another by understanding 
its differences and stages of development. Stages of development of HRM Modern concept of HRM has developed through the following stages. First, the commodity concept. Before industrial revolution, the guild system was the beginning of personal management. Guild was a closely knit group concerned with selecting, training, rewarding and maintaining workers. Labor began to be considered a commodity to be bought and sold. Second, the factor of production concept. Employees were considered a factor of production just like land, materials, machinery. Taylor's scientific management stressed proper selection and training of employees so as to maximize productivity. Third, the paternalistic concept. Employees organized together on the basis of their common interest and form trade unions to improve. Also, employers begin to provide schemes to workers. Employers assured a fatherly and protective attitude towards their employees. Fourth, the humanitarian concept. It is based on the belief that employees had certain inalienable rights as human beings and it is the duty of the employer to protect. Rather, social and psychological satisfaction was equally important in human problems of workplace. This is also known as Hawthorne experiments of Douglas MacGregor also generated considerable interest human relations concept. Fifth, the behavioral human resource concept. It aimed at analyzing and understanding human behavior in organization, motivation, group dynamics, organizational climate, organizational conflict, etc., became popular under this concept. Employees begin to be considered as valuable assets of an organization. Efforts were made to integrate employee with the organization so that organizational goals and employees' aspirations could be achieved simultaneously. Focus shifted towards management practices like two-way communication, management by objectives, role of informal groups, quality circles, etc. Sixth, the emerging concept. Now employers are considered as partners in industry. They are given share in company's stock membership. Slowly and steadily, HRM is emerging as a discipline. HRM essentially emphasizes and incorporates those expectations which are not being fulfilled through the traditional personal management. However, few management scholars have opened HRM as old bottle with a new label. It integrates in a meaningful way the numerous subsystems like performance appraisal, career development, organizational development, reward management, employee relations, etc. In the subsequent units, we will be covering all these functions in detail. HRM and its evolution in India The history of HRM in India dates back to the early 1980s when Mr. Uday Parikh and Mr. T. V. Rao championed the cause of the HRM movement. The early adopters of the HRM movement include public sector enterprises such as Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, State Bank of India, etc. Initially, Indian organizations used to have an industrial relations department, which are subsequently re-Christianed at the personnel and IR department with the welfare department as one of its sub-departments. The personal department predominantly suited the blue-collar employees since their general awareness and educational levels were low and the approach was more of administrative nature. The growing importance of the service sector in the Indian economy has also highlighted the importance of change in approach by the personnel and administrative departments. The profile of an employee in the new scenario has the following features. First, 
employees are mostly in their mid 20s or early 30s second all employees are educated and their level of general awareness is high third employees are more committed to the profession than to the organization fourth the rates of attrition and the level of mobility of employees among the organizations are high the organizations have to compete for scarce resources the most important among them being the human resources more so in the case of the service sector this has called for the radical transformation of personnel and administrative departments into human resource departments to reflect the human facet of organizations a glance at the structure of various indian organizations indicates that the majority of the organizations have re-questioned their personnel and administrative department as human resource development departments however this transformation into the hrm mode is at various stages in different organizations the progressive players and market leaders especially in the it and service sectors have fully adopted this approach while other players are in the process of adoption the transformed hr department performs the following functions first participating in the strategizing sessions of business policy second preparing the hr strategies in coordination with the corporate strategies third implementing the various hr policies and practices including hr planning recruitment and induction compensation structuring career planning competence mapping performance management etc overall the hr department has outgrown its mere functional role and has come to assume the responsibility of building the brand for all company to attract the best available talent in the market and also to retain the existing talent this helps in reducing the recruitment cost and the replacement cost apart from reducing the attrition rates which helps the organization to complete its projects in time objectives of hrm the primary objective of hrm is to make certain the provision of competent human resources in the business enterprise so that it will contribute in reaching organizational objectives according to scott clothier and sprigel the objectives of human resource management in an organization is to obtain maximum individual development desirable working relationships between employers and employees and employees and employees and to affect the molding of human resources as contrasted with physical resources apart from this there are other objectives too specifically hrm objectives are four folds societal organizational functional and personal societal objectives the societal objectives are socially and ethically responsible for the needs and challenges of society while doing so they have to minimize the negative impact of such demands upon the organization the failure of organizations to use their resources for society's benefit in ethical ways may lead to restrictions for example the society may limit human resource decisions to laws that enforce reservation in hiring and laws that address discrimination safety or other such areas of societal concern organizational objectives the organizational objectives recognize the role of human resource management in bringing about organizational effectiveness human resource management is not an end in itself it is only a means to assist the organization with its primary objectives simply stated the human resource department exists to serve the rest of the organization functional objectives functional objectives try to maintain the department's contribution at a level appropriate to the organization's needs 
human resources are to be adjusted to suit the organization's demands. The department's level of service must be tailored to fit the organization it serves. Personal Objectives Personal objectives assist employees in achieving their personal goals, at least in so far as these goals enhance the individual's contribution to the organization. Personal objectives of employees must be met if they are to be maintained, retained and motivated. Otherwise, employee performance and satisfaction may decline giving rise to employee turnover. In order to achieve the above objectives, Human Resource Management undertakes the following activities. First, Human Resource Planning, that is, determining the number and kinds of personnel required to fill various positions in the organization. Second, Recruitment, Selection and Placement of Personnel, that is, Employment Function. Third, Training and Development of Employees, for their efficient performance and growth. Fourth, appraisal of performance of employees and taking corrective steps such as transfer from one job to another. Fifth, motivation of workforce by providing financial incentives and avenues of promotion. Sixth, remuneration of employees. The employees must be given sufficient wages and fringe benefits to achieve higher standard of living and to motivate them to show higher productivity. Seventh, social security and welfare of employees. You are listening to audiobook by School of Management Studies, IGNO, for MBA program. Course code MMPC002 Human Resource Management Unit 1 Part 1 Course Coordinator Professor Neeti Agrawal from School of Management Studies IGNO Voice over by Santosh Bharti Edited by Taranam Jaha Program assisted by Jagbandhu Jana and program produced by Manoj Kumar Singh. This program was brought to you by Electronic Media Production Center of Indira Gandhi National Open University.